Hey you guys and welcome to Air Combat USA here in Long Beach, California. My name is Mike Rocket Blackstone. You are watching Flying Fighters as I take my 30 years of experience and walk you through everything I know, all the tips and tricks that will help you become a better pilot, maybe a better fighter pilot, maybe become a fighter pilot for the first time, or you might even choose to become a career aviator like myself and maybe fly airliners. All of these techniques and tips and tricks will help you in anything you fly. Uh, I learned them because I got a chance to fly fighters from an early age, and I find them to be very useful even as I fly uh, the 777 or any other airliner. These are really, really uh, great concepts to understand and the best way to get the optimal performance out of your aircraft. So for starters, let's cut right to it. First thing you need to know about flying airplanes, my dad always taught me, treat your airplane with respect. Fly it nice, fly it gently. If you fly it very roughly and violently, it's not gonna work out well. So the smoother you, you operate your flight controls, the better the airplane will, will fly for you. Not to say that you don't fly it aggressively. You are gonna fly it mentally aggressively, as we, as we will show you in a second. You can fly it as aggressively as you like, but as long as you do it smoothly. So the first thing that we think about when we're flying fighters is, where does this airplane really want to go? And it really, really wants to go where the lift is taking it. So when I talk about lift and I talk about um, directional control of an airplane, I'm literally in my mind, I'm thinking straight away, well, where's the lift pointed? And in a fighter plane, what's great is, is we're sitting right on the center of the wings. As you can see here, we sit right over the center of the wing section. We're sitting on, this, on the CG, the center of gravity. We're also sitting on the center of pressure for the, where the lift is, is the strongest. And that really gives us a really great uh, position as a fighter pilot to know where I'm going to go and it makes it much more pleasant for me to fly it operating on the center line of the aircraft like this. Now, if I want to go to the left, I put the stick pressure into the left which is going to redirect the lift off to the left side of the airplane like this. Now if I direct just a little bit left, say 45 degrees, when we pull back on the stick, what's going to happen is, is we're going to get a climbing left. How cool is that? So we can actually bank and pull and get a climbing left out of the airplane like this. Now if we want to do a descending left, check this out. We can roll the airplane over and put the lift toward the ground and when we pull back on the stick we'll get a descending left. Okay, so some of the things you might think about when you're learning to fly, and if you, if you learn in a basic simple airplane like a Cessna, you might think or have heard, pull back on the stick, houses get smaller, push forward on the stick, houses get bigger. But when we fly fighters, it's a little bit more, a little bit more complex, but also cooler to think about banking and pulling can cause me to climb, banking more and pulling can cause me to descend. So I don't really think of pulling back as up and pushing forward as down. I think about pulling back on the stick makes more lift. Pushing forward on the stick, well, if I want to go fast, that's what I do. I push forward on the stick to decrease the amount of lift that I'm requiring so I can take some of the weight off of the wings, in, literally. Pushing forward on the stick to reduce the weight of the aircraft and help the airplane accelerate rapidly. It's, they call it a bunting maneuver, but that's a really great way to accelerate quickly. If I want to get going fast right now, I ease forward on the stick and take away some of the, uh, some of the lift, as well as taking away the weight on the airplane, okay? We'll talk about that a little bit later, but initially when we change directions, we're going to roll the airplane in the direction we'd like to go, bank, center, pull, and that's going to cause us to really carve through the sky aggressively. Now, how hard can we pull back on the stick? That's the next aspect to this. When we pull back on the stick, we are literally changing the angle that the wing is striking the air. And as we fly along in normal straight and level flight, we're taking a little bite of air all the time. And that is causing a, a high velocity air to travel over the top of the wings and decreases the pressure and that's making lift, that's holding us up. But if we want to turn rapidly, we want to go straight up from this position right now, we pull back on the stick, we're going to start making lift in a very aggressive way, increasing what we call our angle of attack. This is the angle that we're striking the wind. And if we increase that AOA right up to the maximum angle of attack that we can, we can pull at that moment, we can get the most possible lift out of that wing and cause this airplane to change direction very, very aggressively. And if we pull beyond that critical AOA, what are we gonna get? That's when we're gonna to start to get the separation of airflow over the wings, which is actually felt 
literally, in the airplane as a rumble. You will feel the airplane shaking and buffeting because of the, the approach to and exceedance of what we call our critical angle of attack, and the airplane will begin to stall, okay? Well, what's happening to the, to the turn performance when we're exceeding the critical AOA? Not good, right? This is just like a car racing around a track, and at high speed, you will hear a tire beginning to howl as that tire is hanging on for the best it can do as it makes a turn around a track. If the tire begins to screech, so you're going from an awesome turn to a skid and slide off the road, right? So what we find is if we fly our wing the same way, honoring and respecting the wing and noting when we start to reach that critical angle of attack and we just start to get the onset of a buffet and know that we cannot pull any more than that, if we do, it's just like the skid. You'll start to bleed off the speed, you'll start to lose all your lift, your turn performance will start to go away, and you'll be really, really degrading your performance, just like the car on the racetrack, okay? So let's recap. Smooth and efficient on the controls, fly gently. Pull back on the stick to make the airplane make more lift and move the stick in the direction that you would like to go. The final step is to manage the torque of the, of the engine. And in piston-powered airplanes like the P-51 Mustang and just like the, the Marchetti SF-260, there is a propeller rotating at all times. The higher the power setting and the lower the speed, the more prominent this is. But if we have high power settings and low speeds with a propeller that's rotating to the right, from our perspective as, as the pilot, the equal and opposite reaction to that right turning propeller is a left pulling tendency. We call that the torque. If the plane is pulling left, we do not stop that with right stick. We stop that with right rudder. So we have to have an appropriate amount of rudder to manage that torque. That keeps the airplane flying in a more coordinated fashion. Don't let the airplane fly sideways. We're like the like the jockey on a horse. We have to make the plane do what we want to do. And don't let the plane do what it wants to do. If you do, you won't get the best performance out of it. So with that in mind, smooth, efficient, manage your torque with your feet, uh, stay out of the buffet, do not pull too hard, and you will get far better performance out of your fighter plane or whatever you happen to be flying. If you've enjoyed this episode, please click the like, subscribe. Um, if you wanna leave any messages, you can do so down in the comments below. My name is Mike Blackstone, my call sign is Rocket. We look forward to seeing you in the next episode.